All right, everybody, this is Randy, AKA Camp and Randy. We're gonna do a live video today. Uh, don't know who's all gonna join, who's all gonna watch, but uh, I get a lot of questions there on the Hunting the Ridgeline all the time. Um, one screen I have here, which is uh, YouTube over here. On the other side, we have uh, Instagram. So I'm on both broadcasts on live. Let's see how this will work. Let's see, this is the first one we're gonna do. Trying to get the chat to work on. We're going to be on live here for about 15 minutes. We'll see if there's any questions coming in, coming up, whatever. Uh, let me know if you have anything question related on the Honda Ridgeline. Uh, again, this is Camp and Randy. We're going live right now for any and all of your Honda Ridgeline questions. So uh, go ahead and pop them in the comments and we will see what we have going on. seeing anything pop up here. There we go. Now we're live on Instagram. That was not live before. Again, this is Randy at Camp and Randy, also AKA Honda Ridgeline store. So uh, get a ton of questions. If we're not going to get questions here, I'll just start answering a lot of the questions that I've been getting. Um, one of the things that we get a lot of in a lot of my uh, comments that are on my uh, YouTube feed is the uh, Tuno cover. Somebody told me to pronounce it Tuno. I say Tanu. Uh, let me know what you think is uh, your favorite way to pronounce the bed cover. Um, basically, you know, Honda had a, a recall on that. And what that means to everybody is it's really weird. Uh, so it's three pieces the uh, hard cover or bed cover, and it flips back over on top of itself twice. And what Honda noticed, and I actually had one of uh, my viewers hit me up and say that his actually flew off on the uh, interstate. And there's only one D-ring. But what's really weird is if you look at your, uh, let's see, has the chip shortage slowed the ridgeline production? That I'm unaware of, of any production on that. Everybody that um, has gotten an order on their ridgeline 2021 is getting them. Um, haven't heard of any issues whatsoever with any uh, chips. If you want to make a comment and let me know some more information on that that you know about the chip, I'll look that up as well. Um, but back to the Tanu or the Tuno cover, um, where one of my viewers actually had flipped uh, and hit out into the uh, interstate, I guess. But what they did is they added another D ring on, uh, I guess, the second piece that comes up and around to connect to the third piece. And I didn't think that anything would happen with. Uh, that that cover because I've had it geez I've had it from forever like since the 2017 and uh, what's up Roland Cuban thanks for tuning in I appreciate it um, I need to hook up with you because uh, I'm getting married and I'd like you guys to cater so I'll be hitting you up soon uh, so I appreciate you hanging out and uh, so what's gonna happen is just go to the Honda dealer with your original hardcover if you have it. If you don't have two D rings on that second uh, wrap around there uh, on the hinge, and what they'll do is they'll put another D ring, connect those two. But here's my question. Here's my question for everybody. What is like 
my issue is the uh, the uh, the plastic clip. The plastic clip that actually holds the uh, cover together up against near the windshield or the bed is plastic. I would think that would fail before the metal and the nylon strap. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. Uh, if you are watching and you do own a Ridgeline, let me know what year it is. Ask us any questions whatsoever. Um, so one of my manufacturers that we sell in the Ridgeline store is the uh, no load Design Skid Plates. And I tell you, man, my buddy Ian, he is awesome. So uh, I don't know if he's going to tune in or not. He knows about it. He was, uh, we got something called Marco Polo. If you guys don't know what that app is, it is hilarious. It's literally, you record a video, you send it to me, and then we send it back to each other. So he was showing me uh, pictures today of his, uh, his uh, 2021. What's up, person in danger? Thanks for joining on Instagram. Appreciate it. Let me know if you have any Ridgeline questions. Um... So he's doing some pretty sick stuff. I'm not going to tell you what he's doing, but uh, you'll be seeing some stuff coming out pretty soon. So he's uh, he's doing some pretty cool stuff there with his new uh, 2021. Um, HRG, again, another supplier uh, that we use. They've come out with a one and three quarters lift. Um, and then with the 30 and a half inch uh, tires uh, that I have on my vehicle, the 265-6015 Ridge Grapplers. Uh, that gives you an extra inch of clearance. And I think I'm at 10 or 12 inches of clearance through the whole the whole truck. So, by the way, if you're uh, doing any beer tonight, uh, I am enjoying the Oscar Blues uh, Cannabis IPA. I don't even know how you pronounce that, but uh, I read the back of the box. It's, uh, got, it's pretty hoppy, very hoppy. Uh, give me a second here. So I have the comments on YouTube as well as the comments up on Instagram. Again, this is Randy, Camp and Randy, and uh, also of the Ridgeline store. And I thought I'd just do, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes to see if anybody out there has questions about the Ridgeline. And the new Ridgeline, the 2021s, I'm getting ready to do a video on the 2021s, but my video isn't going to be the same old, same old that you end up having all the time on uh, the video where it shows the outside. My thing is what's on the undercarriage. So we're going to be doing a video on that videotaping, uh, videotaping. That shows my age, doesn't it? Uh, we're going to be showing how, if there's any difference on there. So um, I crawled up under one of them, uh, the 2021, the other day and saw that uh, it is pretty identical. And what it's going to do is uh, that dual exhaust that comes off of it. Um, it's actually at the muffler where it comes off. So you have a single exhaust going all the way back through the resonator, through the muffler, and then it splits and goes off the back. Oh, but what I did notice is you do have two little resonators on the very back uh, before it hits the tube. So I'm going to check that and make sure that's correct. But looking at the suspension, the lower control arms, uh, the entire suspension looks exactly the same. The rear differential, um, that looks the same as well. All the suspension doesn't look like they changed anything. Um, there at all. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things there. Um, I did notice on the sport, uh, which I don't know who has concerns with this, but the grill, the grill on the front of the 2021s um, has halfway down the grill is covered. So I know that's going to be for aerodynamics to help out with the blocky front because you got you got to think about this. The Honda Ridgeline has. What's up, uh, Jess? I see you joined as well. You waved. Uh, Rafi, thanks for joining. Let me know if you have any Honda Ridgeline questions. That's what we're doing tonight. Um, but what we're going to do is, uh, as people load up, Instagram, I only have a few viewers watching right now. Uh, over here on the right, I'm on the iPad. Sorry if it's a low quality, everybody. Um, I'm actually at a friend's house. They got that, that big fish back there. And it uh, looks like my sister joined. What's up, sis? Um... I'm over at a friend's house. I forgot that we had to uh, come over to my friend's house. He's getting uh, deployed to uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, so he's got a quarantine uh, here in a few days. So um, we came over to his house to hang out and see you know, see everybody, make sure everybody's good to go. And uh, so we're going to miss him. But uh, I forgot I had this going on tonight. So I'm like in a spare bedroom. And uh, we're just we're just filming and seeing what we have going on with folks. Like I said, I get a ton, a ton of questions. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to my buddy Nate and I want to say Alex. 
Sorry, man. I, I can't remember if it's Alex or Am Alan. Uh, oh, gosh, I can't. It's Scenic scenic Overland. They are cruising in a Toyota Tacoma. Um, you might know these guys from our... Uh, uh, when we went to Winrock in Tennessee, and our buddy Nate popped a hole in his um, oil pan because he didn't have any protection on it. But we had a blast that day. Anyway, they're driving. They've hit eight states in 27 hours, and they are heading all the way out uh, to get him a uh, pop-up camper uh, shell. So it's like a hard shell, metal, and then it'll pop up, and you'll have a rooftop tent in it. So it's, it's pretty awesome. What's up, Brian? Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Uh, over here on YouTube, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and hit up, hit me up and let me know what you uh, have any questions about the new Honda Ridgeline or the old Honda Ridgeline, even Gen 1, Gen 2. If you have any questions whatsoever, let me know so that I can, uh, you know, answer any questions you have. That's what this is all about. Dogs are barking. Everything's going on. We got a bunch of people here at the house. Not a bunch. We're within the uh, COVID standards and all that, that, that crazy stuff. So yeah, we'll hang out here probably for another 10 minutes or so. Um, like I said, this is the first time I'm doing this. Um, I get constant emails all day, direct messaging, comments on the videos on YouTube and about Honda Ridgeline. So I thought maybe Saturday night at 8.30. Uh, what's the benefit of the lift? It doesn't really increase the ground clearance. Actually, yes, it does, Dan. Um, if you go back and look at uh, my YouTube videos as well as some of my Instagram posts, um, and I'll actually do another video on that. And uh, I actually have pictures of a black edition. Uh, I talked to one of the guys I worked in to uh, get a black edition. And it is so funny. So I have the HRG, and it's only an inch and three quarters, but I end up getting another inch from the uh, the tires, the 265, 60, uh, 18 Nit, Nitto Rich Grapplers, and what ends up happening is that gives you an uh, you know another you know half an inch, so it's a total of a of two inch lift. But because the ridge lines differential is up underneath the subframe, think of the uh, Hummer in the uh, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, wherever they have. If you look at it, you have your independent suspension and the differentials up here. So, and if you look at a regular truck. Your clearance is only as as good as that pumpkin. That's you know your differential. That that's the only that's all you have. So I'm following this Ford 450, 350, whatever, jacked up. Excuse me, big wheels, tires, all that stuff. Literally, he has this much clearance from the pumpkin or the differential to the ground. Our ridge lines. That's it. You have the lower control arms. I get my lower control arms in the back hooked up more on things than I do uh, the actual where the differential is because that's where you got the most clearance and if you're going over an obstacle stick it through the center that's it you throw it through the center you drive right over it um, you know you see a lot of people that don't put the car through the center or, or their truck through the center <laughs> you know how I said car it's not a real truck whatever I use my truck all the time so does everybody else I know um, soft rotor uh, just join. Thanks for joining. Am I supposed to hit wave? I guess I hit wave to everybody who's joining. Let me hit some waves here. I got Instagram on my left and YouTube on the right. Like I said, if you have any questions whatsoever, <laughs> Dan LOL, and he says thank you. Um, yeah, but check that out, Dan. I'm gonna. What I'll do tonight is I will post. Go over to uh, Instagram at Camp and Randy, and I will post those pictures of the ground clearance that I have. Um, on there so I can't remember if it's 10 inches or 12 inches or something like that but you know there's haters out there people always give me grief you know because I'm driving a ridge line but you know what you can literally with that VTM4 um, management you you literally if you haven't seen the videos you can literally get out of anything all you need is one tire one tire of traction. You can have two of them up in the air and you can just go right through it. It's like I don't know what I don't know what the argument is with Tacomas and ridge lines and all this flack I get from everybody um, on stuff. The only thing the ridge line doesn't have 
is we've experienced some overheating with the transmission but I think it depends on what mode you're in because you know it has the snow mode sand mode mud mode um, that was the only issues that we had was transmission overheating problems when we we're out so uh, what's up Andrew thanks for joining I appreciate it on Instagram I got more people join on Instagram how much did the MP get so uh, Dan with my tires How's the start stop feature? I'll get to that in a second, Jay, but let me finish up with Dan's question. The MPG, I noticed two miles an hour difference, but see, I went up in tire size. So I'm at a 30 and a half inch versus I think a 29 and three quarters with the, uh, what is it, 245s that are on it that come with it. I did notice a difference in that, um, but still, and I have the Nolo Designs uh, ditch light brackets. And, um, oh, damn, man, you're hitting me with the questions. So we're going to find out what the 2021, it's got the same transmission cooler. I have a 19, I believe, how easy it is to get through the snow. Yep, yep, the snow mode is amazing. So I'm going to get that, get there. I'm going to have to write this down. There's all kinds of stuff. Uh, they just be jealous. They be bouncing around on their Rough Riders. Oh, dude, I'm all over the place. Sorry, I got a lot of ADD. So when I go off-roading and trailing, and so I have an old uh, 1996 Jeep Cherokee. So when I'm on the Jeep Cherokee, when I take that, you know, you're all over the place, bouncing around with those two solid axles, bang, bang, bang. And what's hilarious is um, when I take the ridge line, I leave everybody behind. Because with that four-wheel in independent suspension, we just go. My fiance, she chills, she sits back there, we go. And uh, it's actually not that much fun when I take the ridge line out. Um, we actually, when we take the Jeep, it feels like, you know, you're just, you know, when you're on a dirt road and there's bumps and all that stuff, you feel it and you're rocking back and forth. It feels like you're really off-road. So when I go trailing with people that have solid axles, um, they're all, I have to slow down for them. So, I mean, it's, it's a give and take, you know, if, if you, um, if you taking it off road, I mean, isn't overheating cause of concern? Well, you know they have the scan gauge and everything that you can hook up to the OBT OB, OBD2 uh, reader, and you know you can monitor monitor that. But what I noticed is, I think what we as Honda owners need to do with the variable uh, time manager, you know, the VTM4 transmission, is know when to use what mode. And I don't think Honda did a good job in explaining to everybody. I did find a couple of things out there that allows us to um, figure out what mode to be in. But when you're going up a steep incline, I think normal mode. So when we did Windrock, Windrock was back uh, when, when we did in Tennessee. And they have green trails. They're not green. Uh, you need a highly modified vehicle. I can't believe we got out of that place when, when we did um, but we noticed, uh, one of us did normal mode, no overheating problems. One of us did sand mode. The other one did mud mode, both the sand and mud mode overheated. And when I say overheated, you just got a warning, you know, uh, temperatures too high. So what we did was we ran the, the normal mode, but when you run, um, like mud mode and things, it takes, it turns off the traction and everything. So I don't know what the difference was. Um, we had the same air intake on all of the vehicles. Uh, I changed over to an uh, Wasillian uh, Space Dust IPA. Uh, we finished up with the Canna Bliss Oscar Blues. So uh, that's what we're having now. Um, let's see. So we talked about... Um, gosh, you can see my nose in this one. Sorry, YouTube. I'll try to be a little different here. Um, but... Uh, Let's see, so a lot of questions. So we talked about the hard cover, uh, the two-no cover, tanu cover, tonu cover. Uh, you guys know I can't say that right. Um, some of the other questions I was getting is um, the trunk. Is there, is there, yeah, there is a transmission cooler, John. Um, here's the thing is with the all-wheel drive, uh, it can tow 5,000 pounds, and you get the seven pin on the back, the two-inch receiver. He carried more momentum from the looks of it. Now, Ian, you know that's not right. You've been, Ian, you've been screwing with that transmission cooler your entire existence. Um, 
Let's see. So is the econ mode mostly? I've never really. All right, let me get to that e that econ in a second. I'll make a note to that to get to the econ. Give me a second. So, um, dang it, there's so many comments coming in. I can't keep track of what we're talking about. So uh, on the transmission overheating si situation, um, Ian was talking about that uh, Nate had more momentum in the front. And I disagree, but Ian's been messing with his uh, transmission cooler and he'll be uh, probably doing some more mods on that, but I know what I was talking about. So, so if you have the all wheel drive, you do have a, have a transmission cooler because um, you can tow 5,000 pounds and put the transmission cooler in there. If you have a front wheel drive, you're pulling 3,500 pounds and you cannot, um, you don't have a transmission cooler on that. Um, on the econ mode, I put the econ mode on pretty much only on the interstate. Some people disagree with me. They think that the econ mode should be used in city. And I'll tell you this about the econ mode. What it does is it lowers the air conditioning. So if it's hot outside and you have the econ mode on it, you're going to be complaining and bitching and moaning to your uh, service advisor that your air conditioner is not working. So if you need air conditioning, do not put it on econ mode. You're not going to get high efficiency, tons of air moving in your Honda. You're going to end up having a, uh, give me a second. Your car is not going to get cool. So when you put it on the econ mode, it's going to, it's going to reduce your air conditioning. It is going to expand the shifting of your vehicle. So you're going to have to go three quarters of the way on the gas pedal to get it to downshift. Um, now don't worry if you are in, in econ mode and you floor it, it will engage the car in normal mode and will downshift, pour the gas in and get you going if you need, you know, to make an evasive maneuver. Um, but I like to use econ mode on the interstate with cruise control because what it does, set it to 70 miles an hour, you go up a hill, it will go down to say 65 miles an hour before it downshifts. Then it'll downshift. It, what it's trying to do is it's trying to expand the shifting of the engine. So if you can keep that engine at lower RPMs, you're gonna get better gas mileage. And that's the whole point of the econ mode. Don't use it for towing. You can use it for the city mode, but what you're going to notice, again, is your air conditioning is going to be low. Your throttle response is going to be sluggish. If you have passengers, here's my thing on econ mode in the city. If you have passengers in the car and you don't want to jerk their head when you get on the gas, stick in the econ mode. It is like driving Miss Daisy. It is like limo mode. If you use your Ridgeline for Lyft or uh, Uber, put it in econ mode because... When you give it the accelerator, it's smooth, smooth as glass when you're when you're accelerating off the light. Um, that's one of the things I do like about econ mode. Um, let's see, what are some other questions I get? Uh, so we're talking about the trunk and what it'll fit. Um, I got something really cool. I hope you guys saw it on Instagram, and I'm going to be doing a video pretty soon on uh, Sylvan Sport. And this is a crazy story. So uh, I do hip camp, right? So uh, and if you haven't checked hip camp out, download it. It's amazing. It's H-I-P camp. And what you do is you download it and people have private property that you can camp on from like $30 a night. A lot of people live on farms. They, um, Harvest Host I do also, and that's breweries and wineries, mainly wineries. Um, but anyway, I went up to Brevard, uh, Hendersonville, where we hang out a lot. There's some really good breweries up there and uh, found this person, her name's Caitlin. She's got a little uh, a little piece of property. We camped on it and I found out she worked for Sylvan Sport. Sylvan Sport, if you wanna look that up, is really cool. They make these little campers or these trailers called Easy Go that has a tent built into it, a pop-up tent. So they have a couple different versions of that and you guys need to check this out because they are uh, making a real camper. It is like a composite camper. I gotta see one of the beta versions of this thing. The kitchen, the entire kitchen comes out of the shower on the side at a 45 degree angle. And it comes out the side and so you can cook outside or inside and the shower splits in half to the bathroom and the bed lowers down, you have these huge windows. It's gonna be sick. When you guys see this thing, it's amazing. So anyway, Camp at Caitlin's property, um, and I'm gonna do a video on that as well. Then we leave, 
and we uh, come back to Greenville, we go to Tetrad Brewing. Uh, my buddy who has a cigar business, business uh, Castilla Mo Mobile, he was there. We were talking, chilling. I meet another guy that works at Sylvan Sport. So uh, they told me about this really cool kitchen they have. So I looked this kitchen up, and they have two of them. One's called a Dino Might, and one's called a Dino Max. So I ended up buying the Dino Max. And you guys, if you looked at my Instagram account, it's in there. It literally is like 50 pounds, and it folds all up. It's got bamboo tops on it. It's all made out of aluminum. You take this thing, and it fits in the Honda Ridgeline trunk. Like, I just stick it in there. It's like, it's in the trunk. So I have in the trunk my Coleman camping uh, stove. And if I want to put my uh, blow-up kayak, my blow-up kayak's in there. I put that in there. And then uh, this kitchen's in there. So now I, I went and got some smaller tubs, put them in the back because I have the hard cover on there, the, the, the Tanu or Tuno cover, however you want to say. And what I do is I just open it up now and I take the Ridgeline tent, I put that in, I take off the hot, the hard cover, uh, the bed cover, and then we, uh, you know, we set that up. I got the porta potty out there I have set up with the little changing room, which is awesome. And if you guys go uh, check out my Amazon link and the Instagram connection, I have all the stuff I've ever bought for camping. So if you guys, you know, I get a little cut, I guess, on that because it's an affiliate program. Uh, if you guys want to buy something through my Amazon link, you know, I think you might save some money and I make money. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, you guys got to check that out. I'm trying to get a promo code. I am selling it on the RidgelineStore.com. Can you throw us some links to the products you are referring to? Um, actually, if you go to the RidgelineStore.com, um, I actually have the uh, Sylvan Sport on there. So I can order it for you and get it shipped to you. Um, or you can go to SilvanSport.com and look up Dynomax and our, our Dino, Dino Max and Dino Might. So. You know, the only thing that's bad about this YouTube Live is I'm on an iPad and it just shows me your your questions very quick. I have to like read it really quick and then it disappears. So, um, but yeah, that, that kitchen, guys, I am like blown away at the engineering. My only issue was, is it's made in China, but everything was designed here in America and we were up at Oscar Blues this weekend, which is in Brevard, North Carolina. And I was actually able to tour their facility. Dude, it is a little American-made company. It is so cool. I mean, check out Sylvan Sport. You guys, it's pretty cool what they have. It, like, they're true innovators and engineers. I'm blown away by the cool stuff that they do. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Oh, we got a comment there. No, I guess not. Um, let's see what are other questions I got I got on the 2021 now I did notice on the 2021 when you open up the hood the cowl right in the front is all designed differently and I was and, and still the batteries covered there's still no better way to jump start or hook up your inverter to your to your uh, to your battery like before so if um, you know you have to jump start something again, I always recommend that uh, one millimeter thread over there on the uh, fender side that you can do either that or just remove that cowl. I think I think with the 2021, it's going to end up uh, causing you an issue with uh, intake because when you look at that that flow for the air, it's actually going to. Um, I don't think it's going to flow properly. So if you take that off. How's the start stop? Oh, that's right, Jay. Sorry, the start stop function. Um, I've driven with the nine speed uh, automatic uh, fly by wire push button transmission. The auto start, uh, I drove it in the passport. I like it. I, uh, I have a lot of people that complain about it. They don't like it. I really don't understand why people don't like it um, because everything still works in the car. The only thing that you feel, it's not the starter. Everybody thinks, oh, the starter's going to go out. The starter's going to go out. It's not. The way all your auto start uh, features work is when it shuts off, one of the cylinders or two of the cylinders are already under compression, okay? 
So that cylinder head's pushed up there. It's compressed that fuel air mixture. And what's going to happen is when you lift off the brake, it's going to ignite that. It's going to ignite it. I'll say it again. It's going to ignite it. It's not the starter that's starting. Bam! Drops. Starts the car. Starts moving. All the cylinders start hitting again. So um, that's how it works. All you feel is a little, you feel a little of this in the car and that's it. So it's saving you gas. If you don't like it, you push the button and you shut it off. Um, I mean, I, I don't know I don't know what to say about it. Um, it's not going to mess up the motor. It's not going to uh, shorten the lifespan of anything on the car. I think it's a great invention. Give me a second. I think it's a great invention because, I mean, you're sitting at the light. And, I mean, my goodness, I don't know about you, but when you sit there at the light and how much idling we do, wasting fuel, polluting the air, I think it's a great thing. So, um, if you haven't used it, I mean, try it. It is weird in the beginning, but I'm telling you, you drive the car for three to four days and you won't even notice it's there. So, that's my two cents on that. So, um, let's see. The bed's the same. Your hard, you, the, the Ridgeline tent will still fit in the 2021. Your, um, your uh, bed cover's the same. Honda's updated the part number. So on the Ridgeline store, I can get you the latest one. It's got, it's got the recall fixed on that. Um, we are looking at the rear differential skid plate to see if that fits properly with the dual exhaust um, with the Passport. When the Passport came out with the dual exhaust, uh, Nolo Designs had to modify the, um, the the design, and I actually had uh, an aftermarket folks. I thought some of the guys going crazy over SC, SVCM deletes. I think it's a good system now. So Ian over at Nolo Designs just said that what I read. So um, we'll get some more information on that. Post that again, Ian. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I work, I work in uh, the automotive uh, business. So when he, when he just wrote that, all I, all I saw was South Carolina DMV. Uh, let's see, Ridgeline tent or the soft topper with their tenting end put on. All right, so here's the thing with the tent. I have the Ridgeline tent, and I have a rooftop tent on my Jeep. And Ian from No Low Designs. He has the soft topper, so he moved his soft topper over to the 21, and we went camping um, out at Windrock. He had the soft topper with the cover extension over that. He did fine. He loved it. Um, but he runs he runs the uh, you know the, he runs the soft topper, and he did great. He had a cotton there. He did have something that was pretty badass, which was that Dewalt fan. So he had you know a Dewalt cordless drill battery stuck that on there and he had a nice little fan going um myself and nate we had our ridgeline tents and what's cool with the ridgeline tent is you unhook it from the truck you just pull it out and set it on the ground so when we went wheeling um our tent stayed at stayed at the camp we didn't have to disassemble or anything and then we went back we just pulled them back up on the truck take the clips down clip it back to the truck and we were good to go Seems like the soft topper is easier solution for camping and covering the cargo. See, now I'm 50-50 on that. I prefer my hard cover because it locks. I have the tailgate lock. If you have a 2020 and, and newer, you automatically have the tailgate lock. But us with the, se the 17s to the 20s, uh, 17s to the 19s, you have to buy the aftermarket lock for the tailgate sell that on the Ridgeline store too. So I have some partnerships with that. So if you want to check that out, um, it is a manual key, but um, you take the, the back off, you put it in, you know, it's basically three bolts to take off, put it on. There's another lot, uh, another uh, linkage and you're good. You have a locking tailgate. And then with the hard cover on the inside back, it clips and you can't lift it up. So your, your gear is secured in there. So I can put all my camping gear under the hard, topper with the tailgate locked all my stuff is in there it's good nothing nothing goes away they say the inference from the flintstones era eh. the scvm delete thoughts on the cylinder deactivation system improvements so that's what ian said 
But uh, the infotainment center, um, I'm not familiar with the Nissan issue, Dan. Um, with the, uh, uh, let's rewind, rewind. I feel like Biden here. I'm all jacked up. Can't remember where I'm going with stuff. But um, you know what's great is you can just choose what you want to do and what works best. Um, Ian has the uh, soft topper. I've seen some other of my followers that, that check me out and all that. They, they have the same thing with the soft toppers. I think they look pretty cool. Um, don't get me wrong. I'd love to run a soft topper. Um, but I like that hardcover. Now, I just partnered with a company called Hobbs, H-O-V-B-S. They just made a, uh, a uh, bed rack. A mid bed rack which I'm gonna get uh, there three weeks out they're so popular um, super outdated really I don't know about that I, I like the infotainment center but yeah I've been in a lot of other cars and they're pretty they're pretty sweet but you got to remember Honda make sure stuff works they don't jump on the latest bandwagon I mean, you can look at the Chrysler products, the Dodges, the Jeeps with their, their infotainment center where the whole, all the heaters, everything works on that infotainment center. The covers are peeling off, you know, where you push the buttons. I mean, you look at a lot of infotainment centers from other manufacturers. They might be a little bit more advanced, but they got problems. They got problems. Um, but back to uh, the hardcover and securing it. I mean, that, that's, it, it all depends on what you want to do. So uh, with the bed rack that I was talking about, um, they just released the Ridgeline one. I'm going to be getting one here pretty soon. We'll be doing a video on that for you guys. Uh, I'm getting the mid rack because I want to put my, bed, my uh, rooftop tent that's on the Jeep on that. I'm probably going to retire the uh, Ridgeline tent because for me, I mean, it, takes, it only takes me five minutes maybe 10 minutes to set it up and get it going. But uh, I'll tell you, I do love my rooftop tent on the Jeep because I literally unsnap it, flip it open, and, and go to town. But they actually have some uh, hard, uh, some tanu cover or bed cover um, extensions on there uh, so that it'll sit the bed cover above that. And my dream, this is my dream, is to be able to have my Honda Ridgeline hard cover on there just to be able to open up the last flap. I don't need to open it all. I just want to open up the last flap or just a little bit so I can get everything in and out. So we're going to be doing some testing on that. You guys will see that pretty soon. Um, I don't know, man. It's like 9.08. We started this at 8.30. Um, you know, not a lot of people watching, but great questions. Um, this is what it's all about. Uh, I'm all about the Honda products. I love having a vehicle that nobody else has. I love it. You go out on these trails and all you see are the same cars, the same trucks, the same modifications, the same traction boards. Like, I don't even have the traction boards. I have go treads. Have you guys checked those out? You guys ever check out go treads? Check them out. Made in America. Little small business. They fold up. I have them in a, in a little... Uh, Little tiny, uh, I ended up getting these these little cubes. Uh, they're the black and yellow ones from Home Depot. I used to have great big totes. And I used to have one big tote for tent camping, one big tote for, uh, uh, what's it called? One big tote for uh, the camper camper. Because we have a regular camper with the AC. You know, I have a fiance, so she, she do. She loves the camp, like loves it, loves it. Like she'll go with me and she's not afraid to go in the woods. Like it's awesome. Can't, can't believe I met somebody like so beautiful and loves to go outside. You know, you don't usually get those two combinations together. So, um, so anyway, we, uh, I forget where I am. I'm as bad as freaking the Biden guy. That's so funny. So. Uh, a lot of stuff going on here on both Instagram and uh, Facebook. So I pre I'm not Facebook, uh, YouTube. So I appreciate all the questions. So we're going to see what we end up getting uh, with the uh, what's up XWO over there on Instagram. Thanks for joining. Christopher, what's up? My sis giving out love. <laughs> She's <laughs> Jess is LOL. And I don't know what I said that you got the LOL for, but that's pretty funny. 
that beer is done. So uh, now I'm going to hang out. We're at 40 minutes on this, so I think I'll do a whole hour because people keep popping up questions, and I think this is awesome. And I see people popping in, popping out. So, um, you know, it'll, it'll work pr really well. I'm trying to think of some other things. Um, I have noticed with uh, my lift kit that's on there, I'll get some uh, popping on the... Uh, the sway bar links. Oh, I want to regress. Let me let me rewind a little bit about everybody on the trails. So, when I'm out on my ridge line, and all you see is Jeeps and Tacomas, it is great to have a vehicle that is, I want to say, more capable. Because if I get, I'm more, in the Honda Ridge line, I, I mean, I think I can get out of anything. I haven't had any issues. And those, uh, those Ridge Grapplers, amazing. I mean, I have BF Goodrich KO2s on my uh, Jeep, and I, I tear through stuff with that without an issue, and I don't even have lockers on my XJ. But, I mean, I just, I, I don't know. I just have all this confidence in the world when I'm in my Ridge line, and, um, and I think it's more fun to be an individual instead of following the herd. I don't, I'm not a sheep. I'm the sheep dog always have been I don't follow the grain of everyone else I like to do my own thing um, people people crack at me because I do what I want to do I don't I don't I don't agree with the mainstream of, of society um, if you guys want to email me or text me about all this wackiness oh, never mind I'm not even going there and I apologize for anything I post on uh, Instagram that offends anybody <laughs> But it is just some... Do I have some in my tooth this whole time? And you guys didn't tell me? I think I did. We had chicken wings tonight. I think I had something in there. You do you. That's right. We do ourselves, man. Overland NC, thanks for the smiley face. I appreciate that. But, uh, dude, it's the best. It's the best. And then Nate, Nate's out there with his, his ridge line. And uh, he's out there. Uh, they just did a video, Scenic uh, Overland. And uh, I'm, I'm jacking up his name, but I'll put something in the comments. But he, he has the most popular ridge line. I thought I did, but no, he does. I, I give it up to Nate. He's, he's got it. He's probably driving right now. I don't know if they're watching me or not. But, but he's got, you know, the axe on the side. What's up, Wayne? You're very welcome. Let me know if you have any other questions. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here just chilling, having some beers, answering questions. Birds aren't real. Birds aren't real. That is right. Oh, that is so funny. That is on my, uh, so our buddy, Aaron, oh gosh, I am so horrible at names. So when we went up to Winrock, Ian, tell me, tell me his name again. What's his Instagram uh, handle? It's, it's, is it Andy? I think it's Andy Carter photo. So anyway, I, I don't know if it, when COVID hit or something like that, there was, it's Alex. Yeah, Alex. No, it's not Alex. Alex has got the scenic overland. Uh, it's, um, it's, didn't Chris, Ian, didn't Chris make the, the stickers for us? Yeah, I think he, um, but anyway, he made, he made these little stickers and it said birds aren't real because when COVID hit, is that right, Ian? Like right before COVID hit or something like that, somebody said there was no birds chirping. And so like the government was, uh, uh, Andy, that's right. Okay, it was Andy. Um, <laughs> they were they were doing this. Uh, birds aren't real, and so like they were saying the government was running the birds, and then the birds got all quiet and stuff. So he made a sticker that said birds aren't real. So we threw them on all of our. That's right, rigs. Threw them on our rigs, everybody. So there's some Yahoo that's on one of these Facebook groups that did a whole thing like uh, Jeff Foxworthy. You know you're a redneck, but he did. You know you're an Overlander if and did a bunch of weird stuff. So I, I didn't like that video. You know what the point? See, yeah, Scenic City Overland. That's right. That's his channel. So uh, that's got Nate's truck on it. They're actually the ones who are driving eight states, 27 hours to get this camper. So I'm pretty excited to see this camper show that they're going to do. Um, so safe travels to them. They showed some great mountains today on their Instagram uh, feeds, both of them. Um, let's see. 
Can you six foot two body fit comfortably in the rear seat? Let's see, I'm six one and I think of all of the back seats in a quad cab for a mid-size truck that um, you've, I don't know, I mean, yes, you do. Compared to what's out there, you do. So, um, I mean, my buddy Nick, he rides with me all the time. He, he sits in the back with his, with his wife instead of sitting in the front. There's plenty of room in the front. Um, I end up bringing the seat two notches up because I sit all the way back when I sit in the front seat. Uh, Jess, I'll see if I can get you that sticker, okay? He only made a few of those, but I'll see if I can get one. If I get one, I'll send send you one because they are funny stickers. But um, I don't know. Have you guys sat in a Tacoma? Have you, have you sat in them? I, I have, and I don't get it. The floor's way up high, the seat's low, and my legs go far out, and you sit in the back seat, and there, there's nothing there. So I, I don't know. Um, but you, you guys, you guys will, here's the thing. When I used to work solely for Honda, you wouldn't believe the amount of Tacomas that would, that people, they went b between the Tacoma and the, uh, the Ridgeline and they ended up, yeah, it is. The tacos are small in the back. They're small even the front. I don't, I don't fit in them. Um, but I have people who are like set on buying a Tacoma. They'll go and buy a Tacoma and they regret it. And then they bring it to the Honda dealer and said, you know what? I made a mistake. I'm going to get a Ridgeline. And they lose, they lose their butts on them. And, you know, they can, you can hate, you can hate on the Honda Ridgeline all you want. However, it's, it's the most comfortable and the most capable that's out there for it's an all-inclusive okay you have some vehicles if you if you made a little circle and you went over here and you said hey this is for this and this is for that and this is for towing and this is for extending your mirrors out for no reason into the other lane while you're not towing anything oh wait is that the dodge close i think it is but anyway um i think that in the center you have that um Oh, John, that is dead on. The taco still has drum brakes in the back. Yep, you're right. You're right. So I'm not here to hate on any other vehicles. I don't hate. It's all love, man. It's all love. So um, like I said, let's see. Love the interior room much bigger than the other mid-sized pickups. Yeah. Have you been in a Colorado? Have you guys sat in a Colorado? I've been selling those things. Don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, anchor points on the front. Has anyone, let's see, any anchor points for the front? Has anyone winched out? Has anyone put on a winch? I went camping with my Ridgeline one time and used the queen size blow up mattress in the bed, perfect fit for my feet and sticking out of the back. So Greg, uh, let's see, Dan, I'll get with you in a second, but Greg, um, yeah, the Ridgeline tent, go to ridgelinestore.com, I sell them there, and you, because there's no wheel wells, you can put a queen size bed in your bed of your ridge line. It goes from the cab all the way. You have to put the, uh, the tailgate down. But even if, dude, even if you just want to lay in the back, you just want to lay in the back of your uh, ridge line and look at the stars, man, you can put a queen size air mattress in there. And listen to this. If you have uh, an RTL and above, you have the uh, inverter over there on the side. Plug in your uh, pump. Woo! You blow up the ridge. You bro blow up your uh, your uh, queen mattress. Now, what I have, because I have a sport, because I don't like the chrome. What's up, Bombi dude? Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Um, what you end up doing is I ended up getting a 7-pin into a 12-volt plug. And I'll have to put that a link on something else also. But uh, you just turn in the accessory mode. It gives me power to the 7 pin, which converts it into the 12 volt plug. I have a 12 volt plug. And it, um, excuse me, blows up my air mattress. So I sit on the back of the truck, blow up my air mattress inside the Ridgeline tent, blow that up, throw all my pillows, my blankets, and all that. Uh, my fiance and I, we were out camping last weekend and you might have seen the video and it was raining so i had the rain tarp on there and it rent we sat underneath the little uh overhang you know because the ridgeline tent comes with the little uh the shells you know that you, that you can sit on 
or sit under. So that's what we did. I had the little table. This is before I had the Dino Max uh, Sylvan Sport kitchen, and uh, and uh, we just sat under there. We stayed dry. We had a little radio going. Dude, it's best time. Best time. We stayed dry all night long. Um, of course, I love. Let's see. You near to get those for your store need. Let me know what, John, I need to get for my start. I'm kind of confused on that because I don't know what I'm talking about all the time. But, uh, Bombi Dude, I love the 2021. I think that front end is amazing. I think the dual exhaust is awesome. I love how they dropped the chrome off the rear bumper. I hate the chrome on my rear bumper. I don't like the chrome on the Ridgeline, period. Um, I'm 50 years old, and it, a chrome on a truck makes it look like it's for an old man. I'm not an old man. Um, I may be in age, but not in heart and soul. Um, let's see. We got all kinds. Of, I got more people joining on Instagram than I have here on the uh, uh, YouTube. So uh, those seven pins, 12 volt plug. Oh, I. Oh, I. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right. I should put those on the. Okay, I got you, John. I got you, John. John bought one of my Randall's candles also there. So I give a shout out to John. Um, Check those candles out. I, I've been going to breweries here locally in Greenville, and I, I have them stocked at a bunch of different breweries. And um, check those out. John bought a couple of, of them off my website, and I've sold a few from a, a couple of my other friends and, and folks. And uh, I actually traded uh, one of my cigar buddies. He has a camper, and you buy you, he goes to the breweries, and you can go on this called Costello uh, Mobile. And you can uh, go into his camper, and it's a hu humidor. So you get your cigars, and you go in the brewery, get your beer, you chill outside. It's amazing. But uh, he did a collaboration with one of his uh, buddies who has a uh, roastery, I guess it's called, where he's doing that. And um, he, uh, he did his own coffee, so he wanted his own mix of coffee because he loves coffee and cigars. And so we traded some of the Randall Candles um for his for his coffee so so he's got one of my candles and i got one of his coffees and so i'll be checking that out tomorrow so hey what i want to know from everybody is what what things do you do at camping uh with your ridge line um on trail or fishing or kayak i'd really like to know um i'm loving all the comments and everything that everybody puts uh, on our videos and on Instagram. I, I mean, I love the interaction. I, I think I have more friends on social media and YouTube than I have in real life, and it's it's pretty amazing. And it's really the, the coolest thing. I know there's a lot. Social media is, like, really horrible. Um, I think 90% of it's horrible uh, just for what people do with it and the things. But what my number one thing that I love about it is you can bring people together who like the same things that you, you wouldn't normally do. Like in my job and career, there's nobody who likes doing what I like to do and it's and it's it's kind of lonesome. And then you find people on the line that you know love to go out into the woods, just to go to the woods. You're not homeless. Even if you are homeless and you like to go to the woods, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just a good time. You get to chill out, you know, unplug, look at the stars, listen to the sounds and um, you know, when, when you, you go out there and you have a, have a good time and you're just chilling with somebody you love or just chilling by yourself, you, you know, you're, you're with your thoughts, it's the best. And then when you're not doing the same thing that everybody else does, when you have a Honda Ridgeline, you are definitely not everybody else. You are do totally different. You're an individual. You make a choice based on what you like, not what you think someone else feels or, or wants. So, you know, you're out there doing your thing. So I, everybody who has a Honda Ridgeline or a Honda product, I mean, folks who jack up their Honda CRVs, I think that is the awesomeness. So uh, I got a question here, Randy. What's the biggest tire size I can do on my 21 stock Ridgeline? You need to stay at 30 and a half inches, okay? Because it's not like a regular truck or a car where you can just cut something there is some major engineering on the passenger compartment. That's what's going to keep you safe in an accident. You don't want to be in there hacking and slicing and dicing. Um, you want to stay at 30 and a half inches. So if you have 18-inch wheels, you're going to be 265, 60, 18s. 
60, what, two, 265? Oh, now I'm all confused. I'm sorry. Most of my videos do uh, have this. So if you look at my uh, the meat video, I'm pretty sure it's 265, 65, 18s. And then if you have 20 inch wheels, you're going to do 265, 60, 20s. And what that's going to give you is 30 and a half inches. Um, thanks, sis. <laughs> My sister's comment stuff. But yeah, you want to just stay at 30 and a half inches. That's what you really want to do is the diameter. So it doesn't matter what your width is, um, anything. It's all based on the height. Because when you crank it at 30 and a half inches uh, diameter, um, you're going to have... Uh, yeah, I have 18s as well, so you'll, you're, you're fine. So that 265, uh, dang, I want to say it, 65. I got it. I, I'm, I'm stumbling over my numbers, and I greatly apologize. Um, Ian runs a 245, 70, 17s um, on that. So there's a lot of calculators out there, and I found them, and you type it in, and it tells you what your uh, diameter is, and that's what you want to check because what it is is that it's the full crank. Um, and don't let anybody talk you out of it. it it'll work. Um, I've had more and more techs that do tires for me and lift kits. Um, when uh, track stuff, um, Bob, uh, Bomba dude, just look on my videos. I'm I I can't I can't remember what what it is off the top. Um, I'll hit you up on. Uh, on, on Instagram and, and let you know the exact one, but my video's got the right tires on there. Um, but what's gonna what's gonna happen is when it's on the lift and they put the tires on and they start to bring it down, it's gonna look like it's gonna rub. It doesn't rub. All you're gonna have is a minuscule rub with brand new tires backing up in full lock one way. And that's it. And it's like minuscule. It doesn't even it doesn't even uh, you're very welcome. It doesn't wear out uh, anything. And then once you start running on the tires, you get a few hundred miles on the tires, if not a few thousand. Your tires are your your tires are no longer 30 and a half inches round. They're getting you know they're wearing out. They're getting smaller and smaller the more that you drive. So, so we got to have three minutes left. We did a whole hour of this, and I love the questions, um, everything that everybody has joined to check out on the Honda Ridgeline questions. I'm having, still having people. I have more people coming in and out over there on uh, Instagram than I think on YouTube. Um, but hey, I wanted to give a shout out in the last few minutes of this uh, to thank everybody sir, for liking, subscribing, commenting on everything on YouTube. Um, I finally hit to get monetized, which is like the silliest thing ever. I mean, you see these YouTubers and they have millions of subscribers and I hit a thousand subscribers and I'm like losing my bananas and then they're like, hey, you can get monetized. I'm like, what? And so um, my number one video is the Honda Ridgeline tent with the circus music and sorry it's loud. I don't, it, I, when I first developed it or I did it, I didn't know it was that loud and it scared people. So, uh, but thanks for watching that video. And then, uh, I don't know what it is, these uh, bed cover videos. I can make a thousand bed cover videos and they'll just blow up the internet. So, uh, I'll be doing more of those. Um, once I get this, uh, this, uh, just, uh, hey, no issue, Ed. I'm glad you joined. I'm getting ready to get off here in just a little bit. I'm glad you saw that I was here. But yeah, we just got a thousand subscribers on YouTube. We hit a thousand subscribers on Instagram. Um, I will check out Anthony. Yeah, Dan, check out Anthony9018 on Instagram for the winch. Um, I'll, oh, real, real quick, real quick. We do, uh, I got, I got some tow hooks or something in, but I wanted to tell you guys about the little tow hook on the bottom of the Honda Ridgeline. We towed Nate for three hours over rocks and obstacles when his oil pan went out. So that little loop, when people say you can't tow with it, thanks, Ed, for watching. I appreciate it. Um, that's pretty strong. So we're going to try to make some more stuff. I'm, I'm, I want to give my Ridgeline um, want to give my Ridgeline a little more time of life before I start hacking up the front bumper. But uh, one of my buddies, it's all, it, I think it's AWD. It's like all-wheel drive something. He's hacked his pilot, the front, um, off 
put tubular bumpers on the front and the back, and it is just sick. Just absolute sick. I think it's all-wheel drive Nevada, maybe. AWD, NVD. I'm sorry I'm hacking up everything. I didn't know I'd have to do, uh, <laughs> do notes on this. Any nice push bars for the 21? Um, no. There's, there's nothing out there because of that. There it is. All-wheel drive tank. Yes, thanks, Dan. I knew somebody would let me know. But check him out on Instagram. Dude. We and, and tracks the is uh Greg over at tracks. I'm trying, he's trying to make a bumper for us, so uh, you know, he's those guys at tracks, so they've done some pretty cool stuff for our ridge line. I mean, hats off to them. Um, three and a half inch lift that's just sick with a one inch subframe drop. So, uh, you know, and they actually have the uh, lower control arm mover so you can get bigger tires. But Ian and I were talking today over at Nolo Designs, and I agree with him. Once you start moving that lower control arm, you're going to have a lot of stress on that CV axle. I mean, doing a two-inch lift, you're already having some issues with that. Thank goodness we came up, not me, but they came up with that uh, one-inch subframe drop to make those uh, CV axles a little not so stressed. Um, but I'm thinking pretty soon we're going to have a, a, a bumper. We're going to have like a real bumper for the ridge line. Um, a lot of us have been talking with a lot of people, a lot of fabricators. And uh, Ed, we all need the three and a half inch, but we all can't afford it. So, <laughs> so we're, we're going to, I, 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 dude, guys, I like my two inch. I do. It's, uh, it's not too crazy. So, uh, I, but, but when I do see that three and a half inch lift, I do I do get a little jealous. It's it's some it's pretty badass. So, um, let's see what else. All right, throw those questions at me. Let me see what we got here. Because if not, I'm gonna start I'm gonna start shutting it down here. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see, what you want me to do. Um, I'm all here for you guys. Um, I love doing this. It's it's a great thing. Um, let's see, even rock slide. Yeah, got a couple guys doing rock sliders, but what you got to understand is there is a lot of space. I, Honda makes it so the doors wraps around and um, seals the bottom of the door so that when you open the door, you don't have uh, crap all over the door seal when you're getting in and out, getting dirty. So that is the issue with rock sliders. Um, so that's, you know, I got, I got guys working on it. Folks are trying them and doing them, but it's, I don't think it's cost effective. They'll be coming out here pretty soon. Um, all, how much does the Ridgeline tow? Um, okay, so you have two versions. The all-wheel drive will tow 5,000 pounds. It comes pre-wired with a 7-pin, and you can add a brake controller to it. Um, with a transmission cooler. It comes with a transmission cooler. The, um, the uh, front wheel drive will only tow 3,500 pounds um, and it still has the receiver on it and everything. All the ridge lines do. I wish the passports did, but they don't. It's an accessory. So you can still tow like a jet ski with the front wheel drive, but if, you know, if you're going to do anything, spend the extra few grand and get the all wheel drive. Your resale value will be much higher on an all-wheel drive than it will be on a front-wheel drive. Um, this 21 is my first ridge line. Man, I want a 21 so bad. So bad, guys. But I ended up getting that 0.9% uh, interest rate. I traded my 19 ridge line in for another 19 ridge line when COVID hit. Did, are you guys getting any special deals? I saw Honda's got a bunch of 0% and things like that. Um, fiance's hanging out for the 2021 Honda Civic. She really likes that. So we'll probably uh, get that here pretty soon. I'm hoping that the uh, low interest rates will stay. So, uh, all right, guys, we got a party going on at this house. I hear everybody in the other room. So I am going to head out. Uh, we'll probably be doing this, another one of these pretty soon. Maybe have some guest stars uh, pop in. But again, Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I appreciate all the likes and comments. Keep them coming. If you want anything Ridgeline related, visit the Ridge. It's not the Ridgeline Store.com. It's Ridgeline Store.com. 
and we are carrying everything that a small business owner is creating for the Honda Ridgeline as well as Honda OEM stuff. I have some great relationships with Honda dealerships and I can get you everything that you want um, without you having to hassle and, and, and dig for it. Um, you can hit me up at support at ridgelinestore.com. You can hit me up at Campin' Randy on uh, Instagram or just do a search here on YouTube for Camp and Randy. And, uh, you know, you can get, guys can find me everywhere. I'm everywhere. Um, again, so humble. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm out of here. Uh, put some comments down in there, some things you want me to see and build. And I'll get with my folks, and we'll see what we can create and make for you. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me for this 65 minutes. I can't believe I talked here by myself for 65 minutes reading your comments. Appreciate all the love. You guys have a great weekend. Keep safe and enjoy your Honda Ridgeline. And screw anybody who gives you grief about it. Peace.